This is not normal. This should not be happening. Welcome to the Alpenfilm Pokémon 3 Wide Review, Breaking My CPU Edition. This episode is brought to you by CDKeyOffers.com. CDKeyOffers has a wide variety of software or game keys for a fraction of their usual retail price. You can get your usual PC game codes or even library codes for things like Steam, Uplay and Origin. But the most important part for us are the software codes. Here we can get software activation codes for things like MS Office or Windows 10 for a ridiculously cheap price. And right now you can also use the promo code TS20 to get a 20% discount to make the already cheap Windows 10 license even cheaper. If you want to get that nasty activation message away, make sure to head down to the links in the description below and don't forget to use the promo code TS20 for a 20% discount. So this is the Alpenfilm Brocken 3 in its white edition and as you may have guessed from the intro, this review did absolutely not end up how I expected it to. But let's ignore the fact that my CPU now got its own vibrator for a second and pretend that this is a normal review and treat it like a normal cooler. So this is the white version of the broken cooler. This, as I would consider it, big single tower cooler is 161mm high, 100mm long and 150mm wide. The up to 225 watts TDP of heat is transported using 5 copper direct touch heat pipes. The dissipation process of this thick cooler is taken care of by Alpenfoon's Wing Boost 3 fans. These 140mm PVM fans are spinning at 1050 RPM while pushing a surprising 59 CFM and yelling at, and this is no joke, 22 dB. They are absolutely unhearable. Inside the box of mounting hardware we will find a tube of thermal paste as well as the usual sets of mounting hardware for AMD and Intel. Speaking of which, the Brocken 3 black and white is compatible with every LGA 1150, 2066, 2011, 775 and the newest LGA 1200 socket for in Team Intel. On Team Red the list looks just as long with support for the latest AM4 and dating back until the old FM1 socket. But the most exciting part of this unboxing was my new screwdriver. In the bottom styrofoam piece, Alpenfoon includes one of their relatively long Phillips head screwdrivers which you need during the installation process. And while we're already on it, on the Intel LGA sockets we have to first take the provided backplate while having this this side for Intel tags on the top side. Then we have to press the Intel screws onto one of the holes on each of the ends of the backplate. There are three holes on each side. The central one being for LGA 1200 and all of the 1150s, while the outer holes are for LGA 1366 and the inner ones for LGA 775. Then we have to keep them in place by using these screw thingies. After positioning the backplate and adding the spacers on top, we can screw in the retention brackets by using the thumb screws while making sure that the thread on the bracket is on the upper side. From here we can position the cooler on top of the CPU, don't forget the thermal paste, and screw it down with the provided screwdriver. One screw on the side and the other one by going straight through the hole in the cooler. On Team Red we have to remove the retention brackets as well as the backplate and use the one provided by Alpenfoon. But this time we have to turn it around so that the this side for AMD text is sticking out. Here we have to use the inner ends of the backplate with the inner holes being meant for AM4 and the outer ones for AM3 and everything else. From here, stick the screws through and hold them in place by using the screw holders. Now we can put the backplate in place, position the spacers, place the AMD brackets on top and mount it down with the thumb screws. From here it's the same procedure. Splash some thermal paste on there, position the cooler and mount it down. To install the fans, Alpenfoon includes two sets of these rubber knobs. Just press them through the side of the fan you want to install, put the fan brackets in place and hook them to the cooler. I really wanted to love this cooler. When I bought it, I, I knew that it was kind of ancient in PC hardware years, but there were so many things that I thought were so cool about it. The orientation for example. Once you have the brackets installed on the motherboard, you actually have the possibility to install the cooler in whatever direction you want. And this is one of the ways how Alpenfilm managed to call this Brocken 100% RAM compatible. Because the Brocken is pivoting so hard to the left, you actually leave the RAM completely alone. And if you don't want to do that, you can still turn it around and install the right fan a bit higher. But what's really cool about the left pivot installation is that now you have a multi-purpose usage of the left fan. Because the left fan is now so much on the left, you can actually just install the fan onto the back of your case, 
thus having one fan less to install, which is pretty cool. And even the top and bottom installation have their benefits. Because of the pivoting to the top, you now have enough space between the cooler and the GPU to just suck all of the air from the center of the case and blast it out at the top. All of that is just one hell of a thought through product. It was so freaking cool. Another point which intrigued me was the design of the heatsink fit. Most coolers I had so far had somewhat straight fins which were stacked together as closely as possible. The Brocken, however, went with something that they call aerodynamically optimized fins. Whatever that means, but they are surprisingly spread apart. And although I cannot accurately measure if A or B is better, this immediately reminded me of Noxious passive CPU cooler, the NHP1, leading me to believe that maybe the heatsink itself got already some pretty good passive heat dissipation properties. And this was also strengthened by the fact that the included fans are only spinning at sneaky 1000 RPM. All of that being said, having cool multi-purpose function does not exempt you from performance. So let's take a look at that. We tried the Brocken 3 wide on our usual 3900X at 100% fan speed. Here it managed to keep the CPU at 84 degrees C. Okay, so here's the deal. Even though I really wanted to love this cooler, it is not living up to the expectations created by its size, not, not even by a long shot. Sure, it is not the worst cooler in our lineup, it really isn't, but size-wise, it should be fighting with something like the Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro 4. However, it is actually closer to the much smaller Pure Rock 2. I, I really did not expect that. On the noise sides, yes, the fans are extremely quiet, they really are. Take a listen. But measuring them with our dB meter reveals that they are much closer to the level of the Pure Rock 2 fans. Of course, we also measured the performance over the whole spectrum by lowering the fan speed by 10% increments. Here, the Alpenfone never managed to keep up with the Dark Rock Pro 4 or the Freezer 50. Sure, it managed to beat the crap out of the Pure Rock 2, but if we normalize these numbers by noise emitted, it's losing again. So, performance wise, I I may seem a bit harsh, but this is due to another reason, which we'll get to in a minute, but fact is that the Brocken 3 is not able to compete with the high-performance coolers like a Dark Rock Pro 4 or a Freezer 50, although it looks like it should. And it's still not quiet enough to even compete with a Be Quiet. Sure, it will be able to beat a lot of those smaller or budget coolers, but those are small or, or really budget coolers. This, however, is one big boy cooler barely keeping up with the pure rock. Now, I could probably find positive things about this in here, like the noise or whatever, but I don't want to, because this. This is absolutely unacceptable. And these vibrations started the very first time I started it up. Of course, I immediately thought I did something wrong with the mounting, so I took it off and installed it back again, but it was still there, so I repeated a couple of times, but no, still. And fast forward a couple of hours and I realized that I never did anything wrong. These fans are just not balanced. Now, this is one of my P14s. Nothing vibrates. Works perfectly. And this is one of Alpenfun's Wing Boost 3. Do you see it? It becomes way more obvious once you pick it up, then you can feel like the small hits that go into your hands, but just no. Now, truth be told, it does not always vibrate with the extent that I just showed you. This behavior becomes noticeable once you reach 80, 90, 100% fan speed. But for those reviews, I try to think about the new user, somebody who just got his first rig or he just bought this cooler and he wants to put it on and he has no idea what a fan curve is and while gaming, his fan might very well hit 100% fan speed and start doing this. He won't see it, he won't hear it, and he won't notice it until that damn thing falls off. The screws on here are not made to withstand that sort of vibration. This is not a car. There is no Loctite on the screws. Give it a couple of months and this thing will just come down, potentially damaging your CPU or in the very least scratch the hell out of your GPU. So okay, if this wasn't obvious enough, don't buy this cooler, or if you have it, check if yours does not do the vibrating thing, and if it does, turn down the fan curve so that it never reaches the point of doing this, because 
it will always be better to thermal throttle than to have broken gear. Okay, I really want to end this video, I don't like ranting about stuff, I said what I needed to say, so it's time to end this. In case anybody wants to see more about this, for whatever reason, I will leave the manufacturing links down below. And if you don't know what to watch next, have a look at the Be Quiet Pure Rock 2 review. This one does not double as a vibrator. Okay, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it and see you in the next one. Bye bye.